Six point eighteen. Bless you. I'm really sorry about last night. I don't mind. You choose. How about a boat trip around the bay? That sounds fantastic. It's a pity. Six point nineteen, one. It's cold. Why don't we get a taxi? No, the bus will come in a minute. I'm freezing. Let's start walking. If we walk, the bus will come. Yeah, you're right. Let's wait another five minutes. Two. Jim and his wife came to dinner last night. We had a great time. What's his wife's name? Deborah. Don't you know her? No, I've heard Jim talk about her, but I've never met her. She's really nice. Well, I hope I'll meet her soon. Three. What would you do if you saw a mouse in the kitchen? I'd stand on a chair and scream. <laughs> but a mouse can't hurt you. It's just a little animal. I don't care. Four. What are you going to do tonight? I don't know. I might see a film, or I might just go home and stay in. What about you? I'm meeting Nicola in the pub. Do you want to come? Okay. Five. I want to buy a pet for my daughter, but I don't know what to get. What about a cat or a dog? You told me she loves dogs. Yeah, but we don't have a garden. I don't think people should keep dogs in flats. What about a hamster? No, they smell. And they can bite.、Uh, a, a goldfish, then. That's a good idea. Six point twenty. Who's our next caller, please? Hi, my name's Dave. Hello, Dave. Where are you from? I'm from Southampton. And what's your problem, Dave? Well. I'm married. I've been married for five years now, and my wife Maureen and I were always very happy until last year. And what happened then? Well, seven months ago, my wife had a baby, a little boy, and he's wonderful and all that. But now everything has changed. In what way? Well, my wife doesn't have time for me now. She's only interested in the baby, and at night when the baby goes to bed, she's too tired to talk to me. She's like a different person now, and I don't know what to do. Well, Dave. First, I think that maybe you should talk to her and explain how you're feeling. And if I were you, I'd help her with the baby. Then she wouldn't be so tired, and she'd have more time and energy. And then you'd both be happy. File seven, seven point one. What exactly is your phobia, Scott? Well, the medical name is phalaenophobia or gatophobia. And what does that mean exactly? It means I'm afraid of cats. Cats. Yes. How long have you had this phobia?、Uh, since I was a child. And how did it start?、Uh, when I was five or six years old, I remember going to a friend's house and I saw a cat on the stairs, and the cat was looking at me. Well, staring at me.、Uh, I went to touch it, and it bit me. And since then, I've always been afraid of cats. What happens if you see a cat? Well.、Uh, I start to feel very nervous.、Uh, my heart beats quickly, and I have to go away very quickly from where the cat is. For example, if I see a cat in the street, I always cross to the other side. What do you do? I'm a doctor. Is your phobia a problem for you in your work? Yes, sometimes. For example, if I go to a house and there's a cat, I have to ask the people to put the cat in another room. I can't be in the same room as a cat.、Mm. Have you ever had any treatment for your phobia? Yes, I've just started going to a therapist.、Uh, I've had three sessions. How's it going? Well,、uh, now I can look at a photo of a cat without feeling nervous or afraid, and I can touch a toy cat. 
Um, the next step will be to be in a room with a real cat. Do you think you will ever lose your phobia of cats? I hope so. I'm optimistic. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one day I'll have a cat as a pet. Seven point two. Fish, i. Children, in. Live. Minute. Since. Win. Bike, i. Child, I've. Like, life. Line, mine. Seven point three. One. Lived here. Have you lived here? How long have you lived here? Two. Known him. Have you known him? How long have you known him? Three. Been married. Have they been married? How long have they been married? Four. Had his dog. Has he had his dog? How long has he had his dog? Seven point four. Go to university. Go to primary school. Retire. Get divorced. Have children. Get married. Go to secondary school. Separate. Seven point five. Good evening, and welcome to Film of the Week. Tonight we're going to see Sofia Coppola's film Lost in Translation. This film came out in two thousand and three, and it gave the young film director her first Oscar nomination. Before it starts, Anthony, can you tell us a bit about her? Well, of course, as you know, Sofia Coppola is the daughter of Francis Ford Coppola,、mm -hmm. so you could say that she was born with a camera in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> she was born in New York in nineteen seventy one. While her father was making the film *The Godfather*, and in fact she actually appeared in the film, she was the little baby in the baptism scene.、Uh, After she left school, she decided to become an actress, but her career as an actress didn't last long.、Uh, when her father made *The Godfather* Part Three, he gave his daughter a part in the film. She played Mary Corleone, the Godfather's daughter,、mm -hmm. but it was a disaster, and the film critics wrote terrible things about her. So she stopped being an actress, and she went to the California Institute of Art, where she studied fine arts and photography. Then she decided to become a film director. Nineteen ninety nine was a really big year for her. She directed her first film, The Virgin Suicides, and this time the critics thought she was great. She also got married to the film director Spike Jones, but they separated after a few years. And then in two thousand and three, she made her next film. Which is the one we're going to see now, called Lost in Translation. Lost in Translation was the film which made Sofia Coppola famous. For this film, she became the first American woman to be nominated for an Oscar for Best Director, although she didn't win it. Well, thank you very much, Anthony. And now let's watch Lost in Translation. Seven point six. How old are you in the photograph, Melissa? Twelve or thirteen, I think. Did you like school? Not really. Why not? Because I didn't like any of the subjects. Well, that's not quite true. I liked English, but that was the only lesson I used to look forward to. I didn't like maths, didn't like science at all, and I hated PE. I used to argue with the PE teacher all the time. She used to make us do impossible things, things we couldn't do, like. Climbing ropes and jumping over the horse, I think she just wanted to humiliate us. Were you a good girl at school? <laughs> It depends what you mean by good. I didn't smoke. I didn't used to write graffiti on the walls or anything like that. But I was a bit of a rebel. I used to break rules all the time, and of course the teachers didn't like that. What sort of rules did you break? Well, for example. The school was very strict about the school uniform. 
We had to wear a blue skirt and the skirt had to cover our knees. I used to make the skirt shorter. And then I sometimes used to wear blue socks and a black sweater, like in the photograph, instead of a grey sweater and grey socks. The teachers used to get really angry. I just thought it was silly. What did you want to be when you were at school? I wanted to be a lawyer. Why? Well, there were a lot of American TV programmes and films about lawyers at the time. And I used to think it would be fun to argue with people all day. So why did you become a primary school teacher? Lots of reasons. But I think the main reason is that both my parents were teachers. And they both used to tell me, when you grow up and get a job, don't be a teacher. So, as I was a rebel, I did exactly the opposite.